I recently read the book High Performance Habits by Brandon Bouchard. Author Brandon Bouchard has collected data, so he did this to discover the habits of the highest performers. Brandon Bouchard was asked by one of his CEOs to get on a plane and to fly out to San Francisco. The CEO was on the verge to burn out and he was looking for a way to get the joy back into his life. The problem in his business weigh weighing him down and the relationship between the CEO and his wife was falling apart. Luckily Brandon has seen this pattern many times before and he knew of a habit that the CEO could incorporate into his daily life to get back to his, his high performing self and be more present with his wife. That evening the CEO went home to try the new habit. He pulled into the driveway and closed his eyes, repeated the words release to himself. Release. 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 As he re repeated those words, he commanded his body to let go of all the tension in his shoulders, in his jaw, in his neck, in his face. After he felt the tension leave his body, he asked himself, what is the primary feeling I want to bring into my home? And by asking that question, he started to generate the emotions that he needed to be fully present with his wife and to be the best possible husband and father that he could be that evening. The CEO walked to house that evening feeling like a new man. So the strategy that Brennan taught the CEO is based on the truth that a lot of high performance people tap into. Most high performers know that they have the power to generate whatever feelings they want in any situation. They don't have to carry around the emotions of the day. They don't have to sit back and wait to feel. They can choose the way they feel. Brendan says the high performers generate the feelings they want more often than taking the emotions that land on them. Like the struggling CEO, we can choose the emotions we want to bring into any situation. We can choose to release emotions that hold us back and bring constructive emotions. The key is to release tension and set your intention during every major transition throughout the day. So we go from working on our desk to into a meeting, we release the tension and we ask what can we do to bring into this meeting? Do we want to bring in feelings of curiosity? So they just close their eyes, breathe deep, oxidize their body, release the muscles of your face or your shoulders and ask yourself what do I want to bring into my home? Do I want to bring appreciation? Do I want to bring fun? And then when you go from the house to the gym, again, you release the tension in your face and your shoulders and you ask yourself what feelings do I want to bring to the gym? Do I want to bring a high level of intensity? Each transition during the day is a chance to build a habit of releasing tension and setting an intention and feeling that you want to bring to the situation. Habit number two, develop a sense of necessity that's a must for you to do well again. You lose your motivation, you lose your drive, you lose your consistency. How can you get better at feeling like your performance is a must? How can you level up your performance? Here's how. Ask who needs your A-game. You know how we do more for other people than we do for ourselves. High performers especially are focused on service to others and the obligation to others. That makes them feel beautiful. and It makes it feel like it's necessary to, to do well today, even though they want to be watching Netflix, which have bags of crisps and six bottles of wine. No, I'm gonna deliver today because it's necessary. Why is it necessary? For others. The way to develop this is at the start of every major activity from now on, you can ask yourself two questions. When you sit down, so every time your butt hits a chair, so it's almost Pavlovian, every time you sit down on a chair, you ask yourself these two questions. So you sit down, ask the questions, sit down, ask the questions. So first thing I want you to ask yourself is who needs me on my aid game the most right now? As I said, we do more for others than we do for ourselves. Who is it that needs you? Who needs you to deliver today? What if you can feel that right now? Who needs you the most right now? As soon as you think about that, is it true that it changes your energy? It kind of hits you in the heart. Oh, I need to help. I need to do something. So don't be afraid of that feeling. You have that feeling inside of that you want to do well for someone else. That's something that high performances do. That deep sense of empathy and compassion. It's not necessarily that they have more empathy. They act on it more. But they feel it's a must for them to serve, to help, to care for the kid, their neighbor, their spouse, their team, the business. So if you feel that inside, and if you don't feel that, maybe it's something to connect with more often, consciously. Set up the trigger, like a desk or a door. Print out those questions and put it on your desk part or your mirror. The next question is, why is it imperative for me to deliver with excellence today? So the essential word there is today. Most people don't like that word. It sounds like work. Right, today. Now. You gotta have that mindset. So why today? You have to tell yourself that. Set up a trigger to ask this question. Why is it imperative that it's today? Because tomorrow is not guaranteed. We know that. And we're very clear that life and time is 
finite. Okay, let's go. Today, we gotta get it done. Let's make it happen. And that's exactly something that's correlated with high performers. They're decisive people. So how do you become decisive? You increase your performance necessity. That's why this type of practice is so powerful. The next habit is to seek clarity. High performers not necessarily have clarity, they, they seek it more often than other people. So they tend to find it and stay on their true path. For example, successful people don't wait to New Year's Eve to have the self-evaluation. They decide what changes they want to make. So what can you do? You ask yourself every day four questions. How do I want to be today? How do I want to interact with others? What skills must I develop? How can I make a difference and serve with excellence? We can all get better at this one. It's dinner time at home. Kids are around, family is around. How can you make a difference at dinner tonight? It doesn't have to be leading huge organizations. It can be with your friends. How can you make a difference when somebody's struggling, suffering from anxiety, and you're just going to be a pillar for them that day? It doesn't have to be. We all think that this whole making a difference thing is about changing the world. And what Brendan learned about high performance in there is research is they ask high performers why they do something so often and always comes down to one person. So the level of necessity to do something for my kid or for my customer, rather than asking during New Year, ask it every day. Set triggers for this again. Maybe put it in your phone as an alarm. So you have these questions coming up several times a day or every time you stand in a queue, you think about these questions. A habit on productivity. One of the things that Brennan's research showed on productivity is that high performance did something unique. They identified what we call the primary field of interest. They knew what to focus on. They knew their passion. They knew their obsession, their thing. Lots of people have busy work, but not their life's work. People are getting a lot of tasks done, but the tasks are not specific, not towards one specific direction. So I'd like to make sure that think about what is my primary field of interest. So once we know that, then the magic starts to happen in productivity. So you know what you want to be known for, what you're great at, what you want to achieve. And that's what high performers do. Increase the outputs that matter. Not all outputs matter. You know, you can be busy, but not get ahead because the outputs don't necessarily move the needle in terms of progress. What high performers do, they basically outproduce their peers in quantity and in quality. They increase their prolific quality outputs. Output. They found out what it is to be recognized in their career. They increase the quality of the output. And they focus specifically on that and say no to everything else. What is it that you can be most recognized in your field for? And how can we get you to focus on that? So ask yourself, what would move the needle in your relevance the most? And in any career, what can make you more relevant in that space? And what is everyone else doing? Maybe you're not doing as well as other people yet. How can you differentiate yourself from others? And ask yourself, what would move the needle in your contribution and how are you different than other people higher quality what can you what kind of contribution can you make if you're not asking these questions consistently it really is hard to be as productive as you could be increase your relevance difference, higher contribution, and then Brennan advises you to do that more. So spend 60% of your week doing those three things. Habit number five, develop influence. So think of an influential person that influenced you in your life, a teacher, parent, somebody that influenced you, that taught you how to think about yourself, about the world, about others, also challenged you to grow. Why was this person so influential? They inspired you. How? Because they pushed you. How did they push you? They always told you to be your best. High performers often challenge the person they care about to grow. That's what makes them most difference where influence is concerned. So high performers develop influence by teaching others how to think and challenging them to think. So they say things like, think of it this way. Or what if we approached it that way? What do you think about this? Over time, they train the people around them. If you impact somebody else's thoughts in a positive way, you have influence. Where are you struggling with influence right now? And where would you use this habit, teaching people on um, what to think in a way that helps that relationship or that activity, or that project? Put it out there in a question. What do you think about us right now? What do you think we should do next? And listen. The last habit Brennan talks about in his book is courage. In his research on millions of high performers, he found that in the face of risk, hardship and judgment, or even fear, high performers tend to do a couple of things. First, they speak up for themselves. They share their truth and ambition more often than other people. They also speak up for other people more often than others do. In short, high performers are willing to share the truth about themselves. And just as important, they honor 
to struggle. They know that struggle is a natural part of the process that makes them more courageous because they enter into knowing it will be hard and they can handle it because they can they expect it. Each of them has the reverence for the hardship. They honor the struggle as necessary to forge the kind of character that will help them deserve the kind of outcome. Many people complain about the struggle but high performers don't. They find with being in the process of learning. They know that showing up even when they're tired will help make them the best. Knowing that the process will be hard, not just accepting that it will be hard. Appreciating that working through the tough times is necessary for success makes them less afraid. The high performers also identified someone to fight for. Early on Brandon talks about this mission to change the world but it's not the case. It's, it comes from wanting to serve one person, one unit, family. The will to work through uncertainty or fear comes from wanting to serve someone who needs help. If you want the courage to stay the course, to overcome obstacles, to honor the struggle, don't focus on changing the whole world. Decide who you're doing it for and work hard for that one person. That will give you all the courage you need. Honor the struggle and let go of your frustrations. No more complaining. Assume you're being prepared for something. Whenever something happens, assume it's a preparation for something else. So think about the struggle. What can I learn? See that struggle as something that's forging your character seeing that thing that's calling you out honor it grow what can I learn from this so next time will be different so I can either overcome it deal with it or gain wisdom so I'm a better person tomorrow so when this opportunity comes you're ready that was the core message I gathered from high performance habits by Brendan Bouchard it's a great book several actionable takeaways and I highly recommend you reading it thank you so much for watching and have a productive day